So in the previous video, we uh, worked on this simple pulley problem. We were given the two masses, given the acceleration due to gravity, and we wanted to then then we wanted to find out the acceleration of of block number one. And we went through quite a bit of work, drew some free body diagrams, set up equations of motion, set up the kinematic equation uh, relating accelerations to each other, and we ended up with this expression for our, our acceleration. Now what I want to do is I want to take this one step farther because there's something interesting going on in here. And that is, let's suppose I take this expression for acceleration for block one that I have and substitute it back into one of these equations. I can put it into either one. And that will give me an expression for T, the tension. So if I make the substitution, this is what I get for my tension. Um, oops, just forgot one little term right here. Gotta put a G on there. Um, if you wanna check it out, you can check the units work out. So in the numerator, I have a mass squared. In the denominator, I just have a mass. So mass squared divided by mass is just a mass. And you multiply it by the G, so I get mass times length per time squared, which is a force of tension. Uh, but here's the interesting part. I'm gonna write this tension in two different ways. So the first way, I, I, set, I pull out this 2m1 over the sum of the masses. And the second one, I pull out 2m2m1. Two M, two M the first one, I pull out 2m2. Two um, and what does this mean? Well, let's look at this again. This is this right here would be the weight of mass one, right? There's weight of, of block one. This piece right here would be the weight of block two, right? So another way of writing this is as follows. It might seem like I'm going around in circles here, but I have a purpose. So this numerator here, 2m2, that's the same as m2 plus m2, right? And the denominator is still the total total mass, so m1 plus m2. And then, of course, I still have m1g, or the weight of block number one. And I still, on the other side, I can write the numerator as m1 plus m1 over m1 plus m2 times the weight of the second block, like so. Now just for the sake of doing a little thought exercise, let's suppose something. In particular, we'll assume that the mass of block number one is less than the mass of block number two. I can switch it around if you like, but the, well, this will be a nice little test. So in this case, I have, look at this, this ratio right here. I've got mass of two plus mass of two divided by mass of one plus mass of two. And what is this? Well, the numerator, since mass of 2 is bigger than mass of 1, the numerator is going to be bigger than the denominator, right? So, so this little piece right here has to be bigger than 1. That's supposed to be a 1. doesn't look great for a 1. There we go. So therefore, tension has to be something, I got something bigger than 1 times mg. So tension has to be bigger than the weight of block one. Cool. Let's go on to the next piece. The next piece I have m1 plus m1 in the numerator, m1 plus m2 in the denominator. And again, if this assumption holds, if m1 is smaller, then my numerator is smaller than my denominator, right? So this piece right here is going to be less than one, which means I got something less than one times m2g so therefore, my tension has to be less than the weight of block number two. Putting both of these together, we find that tension has to be somewhere in between the, t the weights of the two blocks. That's kind of an interesting result, I think. So, thought I'd point it out. 